Shanine Allen's fate will be in the hands of a jury October 6th. The single mother of two and a medical professional from Philadelphia is facing up to 10 years in prison because her concealed carry permit was illegal in New Jersey. Brian Aitken knows all too well the injustice Shanine is dealing with because he has lived this nightmare. But finally, justice was served in his case when his seven-year sentence was commuted by Governor Christie, but only after Brian had already spent four months in prison. As Brian told me, he's still trying to get his life back. Take a look. Uh, I think the first thing that I thought was, oh my God, here we go again. And that's because I've been there and knowing where Shanine is right now and from my own experience, what she's about to go through. It's an atrocity, it doesn't make any sense. There is no justice for gun owners in New Jersey. I think Shanine and I have a lot in common. I initially went to go buy a firearm because I was robbed twice last year. She was telling me she was scared. I grew up in Philadelphia, and I know how it is. And I remember feeling that way when I was living in Colorado. There were a couple shootings at churches, and I was really worried because we had just moved into the neighborhood. My wife was pregnant, and I was concerned, just like Shanine was. So I got my guns to defend myself and my family, and we're getting penalized for that. I don't think that there is any justice for people like myself and for Shanine. We're accidental criminals. We had no malicious intent whatsoever. Like she said, what more is there than telling the truth? It's unfortunate because what the state of New Jersey is doing is telling people to lie. The judge told me that telling the truth doesn't matter in this case. It got me in trouble. I don't think that's America. I don't think that's the kind of state that people want to live in, where if they tell the truth, they might go to prison for five to 10 years. But if they lie, and if they teach their children it's okay to lie to the police, then all of a sudden she doesn't face those charges. It's a broken justice system. Do you think the reason there's so much outrage is because people look at it and they say, you know what, that could have been me. I think a lot of people feel that way because it doesn't make any sense that citizens who don't have professional experience in law enforcement and don't have law degrees are required to know laws that police officers and judges don't even know. In my case, the police officers had no idea what the laws were when they arrested me, but because it's firearms, they want to crucify us. They're going to do everything within their power to prosecute you. They're going to do everything they can to string you up. Brian's life was turned upside down five years ago when he was going through a divorce and was in the process of moving from Colorado to New Jersey to be closer to his son. I got a text message from my ex-wife letting me know that she was canceling my visitation with my son. It was the fourth week in a row. I was pretty upset and I said to my mom, I don't know what the point of being here is if I can't see my son. And she was a social worker and after I left, she was trying to be a caring mother. And she called 911 and as the phone was ringing, she hung up the phone and realized this is stupid. I know my son, he's just going through a rough time, but it was too late. The police came out and one of the first things that the police officers wanted to know was, does Brian own guns? It wasn't, is Brian okay? It was, does he own any weapons? And she said yes. And from that point forward, it was a gun hunt until I got back and they spent about two and a half hours searching my car because it was packed with literally everything that I owned. And one of the last things locked in the trunk were my firearms locked and unloaded. Brian even called the New Jersey State Police and did exactly what they told him to do to transport his firearms. But that didn't matter. He was still sentenced to seven years in prison trial was nothing short of a sham. The judge refused to tell the jury what the exemptions were that protected my rights to own and possess my firearms. Three times they asked the judge on the issue of the moving exemption. I did hear from a couple members of the jury that they didn't want to find me guilty, but the judge told me before trial even began that this wasn't going to be a referendum on the Second Amendment and that this had nothing to do with my Second Amendment rights. I had guns in New Jersey. As far as he was concerned, I was guilty and I was going to go to jail. And that's why he told me to take a plea deal. There is no criminal justice in New Jersey. Guilty before proven innocent. Is Shanine's case the same? They offered her a plea, three and a half years. It's heartbreaking because I don't think anything's changed in New Jersey. If anything, things have gotten worse. They increased the mandatory minimum from 36 months to 42 months. And Shanine falls under that increase. And for what? We need to get rid of the mandatory minimum laws and we need to change the way that we treat gun owners in New Jersey. 
There's drug dealers on the street corners. There are people who are going through the revolving door of the criminal justice system for any number of crimes, and they always get second chances. Just to sit in that courtroom during Shanine's hearing, it was so disturbing to hear the assistant prosecutor tell the judge, well, yeah, Shanine, we think, probably would be a good candidate for PTI, but there's a stronger public need to prosecute her because she would serve as a deterrent not only to herself, but to others. It's incredible because that's what the judge in my sentencing said to me. And he was convinced that I would never commit another crime, but he wanted to give me seven years in prison because he wanted to deter law-abiding citizens in New Jersey from owning firearms. I think the message is clear. I don't think the deterrence is intended for the criminals. This is what happens when you get caught up in politics. It destroys lives. Look at the price she's paying. Look at the price you paid. It's just an absolute nightmare. And I think that's what hurts the most, because she has kids and I have a young son. My two kids are really suffering. And if they don't have me, who are they going to have? When I watched your interview with her, it was the first time that I really saw her speaking about it. And I teared up watching it, because I remember how hard that was for me. It's been over five years since I've been able to see my son, and he turned seven in February. And this is after Governor Christie commuted your sentence. After I was released from prison, and I showed the judge the commutation order, the judge didn't care. He said that the governor getting involved had nothing to do with the custody of my son. That's what they consider justice in New Jersey. Going through what you've gone through, you've now written a book called The Blue Tent Sky. Where'd you get that title from? The title actually comes from a poem that Oscar Wilde wrote after he was incarcerated because they're surrounded by barbed wire and fences and concrete walls. And when you look up into the sky, the only thing that you see that reminds you of the outside and that reminds you of freedom and what life used to be like is this tent of blue. Not a day goes by that I don't wake up and think, right now I should still be in prison. But if there's one takeaway, it's this is what happens to law-abiding citizens in New Jersey. These are the consequences of New Jersey gun laws. If anything, I think it shines a light on the fact that we need to have national reciprocity. It's not safer when I'm in prison. It's not safer when Shanine's in prison. If anything, my family is worse off. Her family is worse off. It's ruining lives. You just have no idea how devastating it is. If they want to, they can take your kids away. I can't leave the country, I can't vote, I can't defend my family, I can't defend myself. I don't have a Second Amendment right. I'm essentially not a citizen in America. I would have more rights if I went to another country. What is your message to Shanine Allen right now? My advice to Shanine is to stay strong and keep your eye on the long game and what's important for you and your family. And I think for me that was my integrity and instilling lessons from my son. I think the worst part was just not knowing what was going to happen. Knowing that you did the right thing and knowing that if good people are on the jury, they'll see the truth for what it is, regardless of whatever the law might be or whatever the judge might say. I think there's a chance to change things with Shanine's law, but I think there's an opportunity for the governor to say enough is enough. I had to do this for Brian Aiken. I'm stepping in and I'm helping out with Shanine and we're gonna do something now that makes sure this never happens again to anyone else. This is unnecessary suffering for Shanine and her family. We have an opportunity to stop this dead in its tracks. We can correct an injustice before it continues. And it has to happen now. This goes beyond Second Amendment rights. I just don't think that we're living in a constitution-friendly country right now. The longer we wait, the more people are gonna get held up in this net, turning innocent people into prisoners. 